Hi guys, my name is Samuel Lopez. I am an applications engineer at Ozen Engineering, and today I'm going to talk to you guys about how to improve your mesh in Ansys Workbench. Uh, before we get started, just a little bit about us. Uh, Ozen Engineering is an elite channel partner of Ansys. Uh, we have a very, we have a team of very skilled engineers who are all certified to use software for a variety of different uh, physics uh, to solve real world problems. Uh, we cover everything from FEA to CFD, and we even do some high and low frequency electromagnetic problems. Uh, we offer our expertise on a variety of different consulting services, and we are available to discuss any kind of uh, simulation need you guys may have uh, or may be experiencing. Uh, if you guys are interested at all in this topic or would like to know more or, or just have any questions about uh, ANSYS software in general, please feel free to reach out to us at info at ozoninc.com or give us a call at our main office uh, with the number listed here. Okay, now with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into uh, how to actually improve your mesh. So just so you guys know, I have two models that I've already kind of gone through and pre-set up. I have my original model here, which contains the original geometry that I used. Um, and this will just show you kind of what the basic mesh looks like on the model um, with just maybe a couple refinements uh, added on to it. And then we'll go into the kind of improved mesh that I already have gone through and created for that. So let's go ahead and look at what the geometry is. Uh, here we can see we have just like a simple, uh, like a curved pipe uh, with uh, two square flanges on either end of it. Um, this is a good geometry to kind of practice on. It's got a little bit of everything. We have some curvature in our geometry. We have some little small features here, um, like these little uh, bolt holes here uh, and the fillets just like this. Um, so it'll give us a good uh, geometry to kind of practice on. So let's go ahead and come back here to workbench and then I will open up uh, our workbench model for this. Um, so just like I'd mentioned, um, I've already kind of come through and just created a very basic mesh for this. Um, if we don't do anything uh, and we just decide to uh, generate our mesh on this part, this is the mesh that we're actually gonna come up with. Uh, it's not a terrible mesh, but in, um, in general, we wanna try and use hexahedral elements instead of tetrahedral elements. Um, and the reason for that being is uh, hexahedral elements are actually a little bit more efficient. Uh, they take up a little bit more space and they're pretty easy to resolve when it actually comes to running your solution. Um, so if we can get a really uh, a really good uh, hexahedral mesh, it's obviously ideal uh, for those reasons. Now, there's a couple of different things you want to check. Um, one of those things uh, would be your element quality, things like orthogonality, et cetera, which we'll go ahead and touch on a little bit later. So if we want to go ahead and uh, try to make this um, a hexahedral mesh, uh, a couple of different things we can do, we can insert um, a methodology like I've already done here. I've, I've chosen to use a hex dominant method, which is just kind of like a very basic method, which kind of forces your mesh, uh, if it can, to be um, hexahedral instead of tetrahedral. And then I've also put a body sizing here. Uh, the reason for this is that with these kind of small areas here uh, in between these little bolt holes and the sidewall, um, I had to kind of put a body sizing there to make sure the elements would actually fit. So if I unsuppress these, and then remesh this. I'll go ahead and show you guys what this looks like. Now, again, these are like really easy, uh, relatively quick methods to put on there, but they're not always necessarily as efficient as you'd like. So what you'll see is that we'll have a nice hexahedral looking mesh here, um, but our element quality actually isn't going to be as high as we necessarily like. And also, uh, you're going to see that we have about 20, 29,000 nodes um, that we're going to be working with here. Um, if I take this off, oops, apologies, go ahead and suppress these, and then remesh this, we can see that our TET mesh is only about 7,000 nodes. So we've gone up about four times uh, the amount of nodes just to try and make this a hexahedral mesh, which isn't always desirable. You know, you want to try and keep, you want to try and keep your mesh um, as small as possible if you can, uh, especially for like your preliminary analyses where you don't need a particularly dense mesh just to check if your physics is, is, is running okay. Um, you want to try and keep it as coarse as possible and to try and have a hexahedral mesh if you can. So we're back to our hex mesh here. We'll go ahead and check 
the element quality next, like I'd mentioned. And your element quality you want ideally to be as close to one as you can possibly get it. Um, typically, you don't want it to be uh, super low. This 0 0.03 is a little bit concerning here. This could this could kind of potentially lead to some problems in our analysis. Um, if I turn on a section plane here, which I've already created to just be the, through the geometry, we can see that um, through the thickness of this pipe is kind of where we're having some of our uh, our issues here. We can see we have some kind of really jagged uh, elements here. These ones are the ones that are kind of causing the majority of the problems, these really sharp um, elements here that have a really kind of weird aspect ratio and a very poor orthogonality. Um, these are the kind of things that we would want to try and fix um, with the mesh meshing uh, methods that I'm going to show you guys here in this video. Okay, sorry about that, guys. Uh, my recorder actually crashed and I lost the second part of my video, but I'll go ahead and uh, re-record it and put the second part here. Uh, with this one, again, I've already kind of gone through and made some changes uh, to try and facilitate our meshing here uh, to show you guys how to get a better mesh. So I'll open our space claim model here. And it might not be uh, initially obvious, but what I've done here is I've actually gone through and I've made several cuts. Now, the reason we want to cut this geometry is so that we can try and simplify it into simpler shapes here to facilitate our meshing. Um, if we have really simple shapes, we can use things uh, more efficiently uh, when we get to actual mechanical workbench. And it actually allows us to take advantage of a really powerful meshing method called sweep, uh, sweep mesh or swept mesh. Now, there's a couple different ways that you can implement your swept mesh. You can pick, let's say, this body here, which is more of a square body, and we can implement our swept mesh to start from this source surface and mesh through the solid geometry here to our target surface here on the other side. And what this will do is it'll give us some nice hex uh, hexahedral elements that will make up this geometry and you'll you'll be able to determine you know how many elements you actually want through this thickness now obviously this is pretty advantageous for a couple of different reasons number one we'll have a hexahedral mesh and number two we can actually determine how many uh, elements we want through the thickness here we typically won't get those super sharp jagged shaped elements that you guys saw before um the second way we can actually implement it is we can actually use it in uh what's called uh, an axisymmetric style so if i hide these other bodies here, uh, here we go, uh, and we apply a hex, or sorry, a swept mesh to this body, what we would be able to do is we select this body like we would normally do, but when it comes to the point where we actually wanna select our source surface, we select this surface, and this surface will then be rotated around kind of the central axis of this body, and we'll have kind of uh, like wedge-shaped elements that are being swept around this, uh, just like the geometry shape uh, shows here. So this is obviously kind of, uh, this is what, exactly what we would want with this kind of curved geometry. We wanna try and be able to control um, kind of the shape through the thickness here. And we wanna make sure that the quality uh, and the orthogonality and those type of metrics um, aren't super skew like they were before, you know, with um, just kind of using a base sizing and a, and a basic hexahedral mesh. So if I show all the bodies here, uh, that's kind of the first thing I've done. Um, and that's that's probably the most obvious. So this has been simplified into just basically like a curved cylinder so that we can take advantage of that axisymmetric mesh. Um, these square bodies are also cut in half here for the flange. And then the last thing I've done here is I've actually gone through and I've cut out these little cylinders in this bolt hole here. Now, again, the reason uh, for this is so that we have just a, uh, as basic of a geometry as we, have, or we can possibly get here. Um, it's really easy just to mesh uh, these basic cylinders, these hollow cylinders in workbench meshing. Again, we can use kind of that swept through the geometry method that I'd mentioned earlier with the square geometry here. Uh, we can use that method on these each of these cylinders and in, in both of these flanges, and we'll be able to get a really good mesh. So let me go ahead and come back here to our workbench model. And this is already the mesh that I've pre-generated here. So you guys can see we have a pretty, it's, you know, they're all hexahedral mesh. Um, this is kind of exactly what we're trying to uh, accomplish here. We want a nice hexahedral mesh with a good element quality. So if I go ahead and check uh, the element quality here, we can see that it's much higher. Actually, it's about uh, an order of magnitude higher. 
and we didn't actually have to pay for it with too many nodes. So we, uh, our mesh now is about 6,000 nodes. If you guys remember the tetrahedral mesh from before, I believe it was about seven. So this is a little bit less actually even than our uh, tetrahedral mesh. And uh, it looks even better than the other hexahedral mesh that we done after putting the body size um, and the kind of the hex dominant method on there. And all we had to do was just take a little bit of time to go through and cut this and then input those swept methods that I talked about. Um, so with that said, let me go ahead and change this back to make it a little bit easier to view. Um, actually, I'll show you guys one more thing here. If we turn on this section plane, you guys remember before, um, it was kind of the middle of this geometry that we were kind of seeing really poorly shaped elements. But with the swept method here that I've implemented, we can see that we have really nicely shaped uh, hexahedral elements inside uh, through the thickness here, um, which is exactly what we wanted. That's the whole reason we ended up kind of cutting this geometry into like a basically a curved cylinder. So it's just one thing to note as we go through this here. So to kind of take you guys uh, through this, as I'd mentioned, the first thing we, we mesh here is these, these cylinders here that I'd mentioned that I'd simplified um, inside the flange bodies here. Now, uh, I've, I've decided to do uh, one mesh uh, method for all eight of these cylinders. So here you can see we have eight of all eight of these bodies selected in this. Um, and that's okay because each of these bodies is very, very simple. And the automatic source target selection method should be able to um, determine which bodies to sweep uh, and how to sweep them fairly easily. Basically, the way it's going to work, as I kind of alluded to before, is uh, when you have the automatic selected, I'll go ahead and we zoom in here and I'll select this uh, body here. We'll hide all the other ones. Um, so if we have this body selected and we're using the automatic method here in our source target selection, what it's going to do is it's going to try and pick a face that has a very similar shape and uh, area to the face on the opposite side. And it's going to actually sweep from the face that it picks or the source face through your geometry to the opposite face that it picks or the target face. Now, once it meshes that, we can actually choose a couple of different options here. In this case, you can see I've chosen to do a number of divisions. So uh, in this case, you guys can see I've chosen to have five divisions through our geometry. And if I come back to our mesh here, you'll be able to see that we have five divisions indeed through our cylinder here. <clears throat> now, these may not necessarily be perfect, but as you guys were able to see with the element quality, they're ac it's actually not too bad. Um, and we can even further improve this by adding just a little bit of a mesh uh, sizing refinement here, but we don't necessarily need to, uh, at least not immediately, because our element quality is actually pretty high, uh, which is good. <clears throat> um, the next mesh method that uh, I used here is actually for the cylinder here. So if I go ahead and hide all these other bodies, I'll show you guys how this one works. Now, like I'd mentioned, we have the body selected. But down here in source target selection, you guys can see I've changed it from automatic to manual source. Now, sometimes it'll have problems or it could potentially have problems depending on your geometry, um, automatically picking a face or sometimes it's just easier to kind of make sure that you want, uh, you want like an axisymmetric mesh in your part. Um, and so that's when we use our manual source. Um, I could also have picked this face and tried to sweep it through the geometry this way. This would be kind of closer to that cylinder that I just showed you where we pick um, our source face to be this face, for example, let's say, and we're going to actually sweep through our geometry rather than revolve around our geometry. Both would work. It just, um, it just kind of depends on preference. Um, in this case, just to show you guys how the axisymmetric works, um, that's the method I've chosen to go with here. So... Uh, we have our manual source selected from our options here. We, you can see we have automatic, manual, manual source and target, um, and then automatic thin and manual thin, which we can talk about later. Um, but we have our manual source and then I've selected this face. So again, it's going to kind of revolve this face uh, when it tries to mesh around the central axis of this entire geometry and just uh, give us that nice mesh uh, that we talked about earlier, uh, kind of around here. Uh, this time, I just left the sleep number of divisions as default. You can change this to be as high or as low as you want. In this case, we don't need it to be particularly fine, so I just left it as default. And you guys can see that we have a pretty nice mesh uh, being generated here using that axisymmetric method. So this is this is perfect. This is exactly what we would, we would be 
uh, trying to achieve um, for a part that's shaped like this, which is, you know, not isn't necessarily straight, has some kind of weird curvature to it. Um, this is a good way to mesh those kinds of parts. Now, let's see. The last part uh, would be these kind of uh, square geometries here. Now, again, this is just to show you guys um, how the manual source works as opposed to using the automatic method. Um, Again, I've changed our source target here from automatic to manual source, and I'm just picking the manual source here, and it's going to extrude through the geometry um, to the target here on the other side. You can do this either with axis symmetric, or you can do it just with, um, you know, like a normal body here that you want to extrude through your geometry also. Um, and here I've picked our sweep number of divisions through the thickness to be two. And if I put turn on the mesh back on, you, you'll be able to see that that's exactly what we have here. So um, yeah, we have a very nicely meshed geometry here. Again, our element quality also looks really nice. Um, we don't, you know, we don't have to worry necessarily about running into meshing errors with this specifically. Now, one thing I will note um, with this geometry, if I come back uh, and turn this off, um, I did remove this fillet on the inside here in space claim also. Um, it would be relatively easy to mesh that with space claim. I just wanted to show you guys, you know, you don't necessarily need all the features. Sometimes it's easy to, or it's easier to kind of remove some of those smaller features. Um, I left these other uh, kind of cylinder bodies in here just to show you guys, or just kind of demonstrate that um, you don't necessarily need to remove everything. You just, um, you can either leave them in or kind of simplify your geometry based on what your actual output is. So uh, with that said, hopefully this was a helpful video. Um, if you guys want to see more related to this topic or if you guys have any questions, just uh, leave them all in the comment section. Um, if you guys are interested in the software or have any general questions, feel free to reach out to us at info at ozeninc.com. Uh, and we'll be happy to get back to you just as soon as we can. Thank you guys very much, and you guys have a good one.